Hi everybody, uh, it's Miss Hagens. Uh, I hope you guys have had a fantastic summer and a good start to your school year. I so wish that I could be in the, out in the Harvard Garden with you guys, um, but as we know, the situation uh, that we're in will not allow it. Um, but I am here in the Urban Harvest Teaching Garden um, to kind of show you guys around, uh, show you some stuff that may be growing uh, in our Harvard Garden or that you might be growing in your gardens at home. Okay, so this is our Urban Harvest Teaching Garden. Uh, so if we look over here, we have uh, our peppers and eggplants um, that, we, that are from the spring that ha are still holding on, uh, still producing. You can see some peppers as well as some of our pepper flowers. All right, and here we have cauliflower. So we know that we're coming up on our fall planting. Uh, so we are planting our brassicas, which are kale, cauliflower, broccoli, cabbage, Brussels sprouts, all those yummy, yummy vegetables. Um, are, you see that we're planting them here. We have a kale over there. I, bet it, I wonder if you guys had spied that, as well as some fall tomatoes. All right, over here we have basil. All right, we know we all love basil. Uh, make a delicious pesto or just a snack on, right? Mmm, it's really good. I love the way it smells as well. Uh, here we have okra, right? We can see a few examples. Here's a little guy right here, if we can see him. All right, that's a good size one. This one right here is too big, right? That one is too big. We would leave him there and uh, collect the seeds later. So we're still harvesting some more of our leafy green vegetables. And this one might look familiar to a lot of you guys as well. So this is our Roselle hibiscus, okay? So I know every year you guys beg to have this planted in the garden. Uh, this is Roselle hibiscus. Out of the flower beds, you can create tea, Roselle hibiscus tea. Uh, the leaves, I just eat them. And it's so good sour if you like sour things and you'd love this okay all right hopefully you guys have an opportunity to taste this later in these beds over here okay we see more of our flowers as well as our squash from the summer so this is uh, oh right here's our herb bed so we can see some sage some more basil i'm still munching on that roselle as well as some fragrant thyme and we know that when we're out in the garden in our herb as we like to use our senses to explore excellent all right here we have some lavender and this is our urban harvest teaching garden okay i encourage you guys to all go out into your gardens to explore use your senses to taste to smell and look for insects and all kinds of creatures that might be in your garden beds okay it's that fall as the weather gets nicer it is the perfect time to explore and see all of the gifts that the garden has to offer all right so what I wanted to do is go over some of the tools that we use in the garden um, so that we can have a successful garden, uh, whether it be at home or at school, okay? So some of the tools that we're used to using are a shovel, okay? I think everybody is familiar with this. Uh, this is a hand, another word for hand trowel, and we know that we use a hand shovel to dig so when we are planting right we are using the shovel to dig we can use it to dig a hole right we could use it to mix our soil in like that really well okay so what we don't want to do when we're using our shovel what is not an appropriate use of our shovel is that right because if we are throwing dirt we are losing our soil out of our garden bed, which is an incredibly precious resource, right? And we are also potentially throwing soil at another, and we don't wanna do that, right? So this is our trowel, a hand trowel, and we use it to dig, okay? 
this guy right here looks like a fork right this is called a cultivator a cultivator and this hand cultivator its actual use is if we were weeding out a bed right weed is when we take out the plants that we don't want growing in our garden if we have grass growing in our garden and we want to get it out we would use a cultivator and what that does is it digs the plants up by the root so we don't really have any in here but i just want to show you how it's used i would dig it into the soil and pull it out and what that would do is it would pull out the plant by the roots so that I can shake the soil off and I can get that the weeds out of my bed so this is an effective tool to dig the weeds out by the roots and we want to dig them out by the roots so that they don't grow back right so whenever we're weeding our bed especially after the summer when everything has been left to kind of overgrow we always want to make sure that we remove all of the roots including the all of the weeds including the roots okay now everybody knows what these are right now these are garden gloves some gardeners like myself right we maybe prefer to do it without our gloves on but gloves are a helpful tool in the garden to protect ourselves okay from some plants have just like rose roses right they may have spiky stems right which we don't want to harm ourselves on a blade uh, of grass or a sticky stem also the gloves are helpful if there are insects right so we share our garden with insects we know that so we don't want to come across a fire ant with a bare hand so the gloves come in handy for that as well okay this is one of our favorite garden tools right so this is a watering can okay so the watering can sometimes we can water just from the hose right but I know you know that at school this is one of our favorites okay for us to be able to water it's an effective way to water maybe if you have um, a lot of space a, a hose can't reach or if you just want to water a little bit so we know the effective way to use a watering can all right is to make sure that we are watering close to the roots there's no water in here but I was going to show you guys anyways you're going to want to water close to the base of the plant okay so when we're watering close to the base of the plant that allows all the water to get to the root system so it can drink and continue to feed your plant so watering like this it's not quite as effective right so we want to make sure that when we're watering we are watering straight to the base of the plant we do not want to over water uh, but we do want to make sure that our drink our plants get plenty to drink so these are our most commonly used tools um, I wanted to showcase just a few other things that are very important in keeping our garden healthy and growing just absolutely fantastically one is the soil right so we have to make sure that our soil is healthy okay so using compost like this all right or enriching our soil creating our own compost uh, is also very important we have here micro life we know this is the fertilizer we talk about how it's like vitamins that we take to keep ourselves healthy and keep ourselves strong this is the same right so this is like vitamins for plants so when we are planting little bitty baby plants we add a little bit of our micro life or if we are preparing our soil for planting we would put micro life all over the soil and mix it in all right so i did talk about compost so i wanted to show you guys the compost um, bin it is very similar to the one that you guys would be using at school uh, it's just a little bit bigger okay but it's all the same uh, concept so here we have a compost tumbler right and so this is one of the other favorites right so in this we would use this to break down organic material and when I say organic material I mean things like food scraps when we're weeding um, plants that we have harvested maybe that we're not using all of it so all that would go into this compost it goes into one of these bins right along with hay or dry grass we want to put equal parts brown and green in and then you would turn it and this is the part that we all like so much right 
So if you turn it regularly, give it some water to drink. At some point in time, this is all gonna break down and it is going to create very healthy and rich compost to add to your garden. All right, you all, I did wanna spend just a few minutes going over our garden rules. Uh, I know some of you guys are not new to this and we all know our garden rules, but I think it's important for us to go over them again to remind ourselves of how to be safe in our garden um, so that we can make the most of the space and enjoy our time. All right, so we have five Im rules in our school garden that are very important to follow and you can follow them at home in your garden as well. So rule number one is when we are in the garden, we have so much lush life growing around us um, as well as the beds and materials that the garden is constructed from. So they may be constructed from metal tins, similar to this. They may be constructed by wood or concrete. But what is important is as we maneuver around these garden beds that we make sure that we use walking feet, okay? We want to walk. All right, because if we are running and we trip and fall on any of these materials, we can harm ourselves as well as damage some of our plants. And we don't want that to happen, right? Rule number two, as I've stated, these, these beds are constructed of different kinds of materials, just like the ones in our garden at school, as well as if you have a garden at home. We do not want to climb on the garden beds. As you can see, this lip is not even for this garden bed. A lot of the times when we have beds that are made out of brick, they are not uh, glued in a lot of the times and we don't really want to hurt ourselves. So you don't walk on or climb into our garden bed, okay? Because we don't want to crush our small plants growing here. If I was to climb into this bed, I would obviously be damaging our plant that we have there. And I also don't want to slip and hurt myself. So that's rule number two. Rule number three to be safe in the garden is to make sure that when we are using our garden tools, we are using them appropriately. So for instance, a shovel like this is used for digging. So we don't want to use it for any other purpose other than to dig in the soil, all right? Which means we don't wanna chop things with it, right? We don't wanna use it as a, as a sword, right? Have sword fights. This is a shovel we use it as such okay so like i said another word for this is trowel so our shovels and trowels we use to dig that's rule number three all right rule number four when we are in the garden like this and there's so many beautiful things growing and we really just want to be able to taste and harvest and eat all of this beautiful this beautiful plants however we want to make sure that before we harvest the plants that we are preparing to harvest are ripe and ready to eat okay because when it is not ripe it could potentially give you a belly ache which is no fun right or it'd be ugh, yucky it'd be no good to eat right so we want to make sure that the plants are ready to harvest and eat so you don't get sick or you don't waste the plant, right? We want them when they're good and ripe and juicy and delicious, okay? So we don't pull and harvest on plants that are not ready, but we also harvest them appropriately, right? So when we're harvesting our vegetables, if we need to use clippers, we need to use clippers to harvest. We don't just pull and hope for the best, okay? Uh, all of our crops need to be harvested in different ways. So we need to make sure that we are harvesting them appropriately when they are ripe. The fifth and final rule that we like to follow in our garden is to be respectful of all creatures, all right? So we know that we share our garden with creatures big and small, right? And that is a beautiful, beautiful thing. Our garden provides an ecosystem for all different kinds of insects as well as animals. So when we come across these animals or insects in our garden we make sure that we are respectful right that we do not squish right we do not 
pick up and touch and handle, right? Because this is their home and we are respectful of others when we are in their home. So we are also respectful of all of our insect friends.